Well, good morning, magandang umaga, and welcome to today's episode of My PI Dream. Today is Friday. Yes, it is Friday, and it's build date 33 on the construction schedule of the pool in the backyard of Villa Feliz. Yes, build date 33. Uh, you're probably wondering, where have I been for the last couple of days? Or maybe you're not wondering at all. But if you are wondering, uh, it had all to do with a major typhoon that came through here. Yes, a major typhoon. Now we were very fortunate, but many others weren't. And I'm gonna show you some pictures here in just a minute of some of the devastation that this last typhoon, one of three back-to-back -back typhoons that have come through the Philippines and some of the effects that it has done on some of the areas uh, especially on the East Coast. Uh, we'll show that at the beginning of today's episode. Uh, so anyway, let's go ahead and get today's episode underway. Now without further delay, let's get today's video underway. <laughs> Now before we get started with today's episode about the swimming pool project back here, I just want to pass on a little bit more information about the path of the recent typhoon. It was a category three, a signal three uh, typhoon for what we call a hurricane in the United States. Uh, the name of the typhoon was Ulysses and it had pretty devastating effect all the way from the east coast of the island of Luzon all the way when it left. The path put it right through almost the center of Manila. And I'm going to show a few of the photos uh, that was presented to us by one of our Rotarian brothers, who's a uh, past president of our organization. He's a now he is a member of a reserve unit of the military here, and they go to the affected areas that help out with some of the recovery uh, and assistance for humanitarian relief. Well, he showed some of the pictures on one of his Facebook entries here I, I believe I got that yesterday I just want to show you some of the pictures of some of the devastation of many of the uh, the families and the cities and the towns here inside the Philippines now if you have family members in any of those affected areas family members or friends or you know people in those areas uh, please do what you can to support them whether it be financial or whether it be uh, sending in gift donations of food or even prayers, please send in prayers because prayers are very strong and help out. All right, well, let's go ahead and get into today's, oh, Lazada. All right, well, I hope this fits. This is a uh, replacement for our wheelbarrow. I, I, I hope I ordered the right, the right tire for this. We, we blew out our tire at the very beginning of the pool build. You can see what my tire looks like right here. And I'm hoping this is a replacement. I, it's kind of hard to find tires. Tubes are easy to find over here, but the tires, they have weird, a weird kind of a cross-reference on the internet when you're trying to reference a web tire. So we're going to see if this fits. We'll try this. And uh, it came with a free tube, inner tube, and maybe the inner tube is still good on that wheelbarrow. And then we can get back to moving moving soil a little bit better than we did before. So anyway, swimming pool, let's get into the swimming pool. As you can see, we have lots of water. We had lots of rain, I gotta tell you. So much rain during that typhoon that came through here. We had no electricity for oh, about a day and a half. And then uh, the water, you can see the water inside here, uh, kind of we rose to about, oh, maybe 13 inches, about 13 inches. And uh, so they'll come out here this morning, I'm hoping, remove the water inside here, and then continue with our pool build. So let's wait on the pool team guys to come in, and we'll see what they're going to be doing today. All right, well, it appears the motorcycle tire seems to work fine on this room. I got it mounted down in the basement. Good thing I have a workbench and a vise and everything I need to mount tires without having to go to a vulcanizing shop. This mounted fine. Now, the only problem is, it's Murphy's Law. Uh, these brackets that they use on here are very poorly designed, not really made to withstand the weather environment here. Although this one is still partially intact, this one is not. You can see it is broken. Uh, so what I have to do is send a, a little drawing design or one of these brackets down to my friendly welding shop 
have them build me a couple more of these maybe a better quality and then the wheelbarrow will be back in uh, back in working condition again uh, so uh, well, I'm gonna temporarily put this back in the the pool team are here they are working on the back side right now back by the little sidewalk area that does the five foot section of the pool all right so now the pool team are here and they are working i'm not sure what they're i'm not sure what they're doing <laughs> oh i do know what they're doing okay so they're mixing up the mix that goes inside for the base of the coping that's what they're doing so we'll probably get all the coping done except for the areas around the base of the bridge on both sides because that still has to be built up with some concrete and uh, I don't know when that will do maybe later on this afternoon so that's where we are this morning don't know what's going on over here so what it sort of looks like is cleanup I think this is cleanup over here for getting the, the four foot section all clean now they got the five inch ten inch and the four foot section clean possibly in preparation for waterproofing possibly I don't know the foreman is actually out getting supplies right now so I can't tell you we'll have to wait for him so I am going to go inside and I'm gonna get a cup of coffee and answer a few emails and uh, see if I can get some coordination done for this wheelbarrow repair now something I just like to briefly mention if you're in the Philippines and you have a wheelbarrow of uh, this configuration that has a pneumatic tire a uh, tire with air in it you might find some places that will tell you that oh when you're trying to get a new tire replacement the, and you give them this they're gonna say oh no you can't have a, a a vehicle type tire on your wheelbarrow this is standard in North America and probably a lot of places around the world uh, but over here they don't like to pay for the additional expense and what they do is they put a solid a solid plastic type of a tire and I'll show you because our workers here that's what they have and uh, you just have to tell them sometime no just send me the tire that I'm asking for don't worry about that it's not on a motorcycle or a moped or something small uh, because it will fit as you can see right here now this is traditionally the type of a tire you see this this is a hard it's hard hard rubber hard plastic and this is what they'll be referring to when they are talking about replacement for a tire on your on your wheelbarrow um, so anyway that's what you might come up against if you're trying to order a replacement tire for a wheelbarrow in the Philippines now the reason I don't like those kind of tires is because they do damage to your lawn you can see and that's what's caused all of this damage right inside here I really prefer the bigger rubber softer ones because uh, they are they're easier to push they have a little bit of bounce in it like on your vehicle and they don't do so much damage to your lawn okay we are now back to waterproofing again <laughs> waterproofing again uh, this area didn't get its first coat because this is a new coat of concrete this area right here which is the wall built up next to the pedestal for the bridge uh, so you can see he's already done this portion right here I imagine he'll get all the way down after they pump out most of the water out of the pool that came from the rain uh, so we'll keep an eye on this and uh, we'll follow each step of the way I gotta tell you I'm so glad we have some blue skies today and we have some drying out because this ground got so waterlogged I over the last two typhoons remember we just came through three typhoons two cat threes and a cat one uh, signal threes and signal one and uh, this, the ground although you don't see any water standing here because the drainage is so good when you walk when you're walking around on here <laughs> especially over in that area over there kind of feels soggy really soggy so uh, that's from the massive amount of water that we've gotten over such a short period of time 
Right, well, is this at the lunch now? And what you see, we've been working on right now. This is the this is the vacuum the vacuum uh, <laughs> suction area. That's where the vacuum adapter will go. We're using our whole cutting drill bit with the carbide bits inside to get the first part. But we can only go so deep, and this is a deep wall right here, so we can go only as far as. As that will allow it to go through and the rest is going to have to be chiseled out. So now what you can see, this is the separation between the 5 foot and the 4 foot section. Once they removed all the uh, concrete hollow block, which was the formwork they were using to hold in the concrete when they poured it there, now they're putting the, the plastic coat over so they can get a nice smooth, a smooth finish on here and then they'll do the waterproofing on there in preparation for the tile. And speak of the tile, uh, we haven't shown yet, but this is actually a sample. This is actually not the sample. This is actually the tile. So you see this. This will be the color of the blue that will go inside the deep section, which is the five foot section where I'm standing in now. The sample for the the smaller, the four foot and the five inch. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. And now you can kind of see. And I really like the variation. Now, this one. This is the tile work that's going inside the four foot, the 10 inch, and the five inch section. So the impression is going to be like this. When you are on that side of the bridge, around this post, everything around there, including the walls on the top up there, are going to be the lighter color. The darker color will be all the five foot section inside here and the floor. So when you are looking from above, this is going to cover the, the separation right here. The bridge is going to cover the separation at this point right here. So it'll look like this is very deep and it'll look like that is shallow. And then of course the sand on the two pads, the five inch and the 10 inch section over there, will look like the beach. It'll look like you're sitting right on the beach before diving into the deep section of the pool. Now we said earlier, this is going to be our dial stone. It's going to go around the planter. Our dial stone will go around the footer support uh, for, the, for the bridge. And our dial is also going to be used for the walkway, for the sidewalk that goes around. Uh, so we don't want too many different things, but each one is complementary of the other type of building material that we have here. And then, of course, up here, it's going to be all natural stone. And our stone, our stone people, actually, right here. <laughs> the, uh, I, I, I'm going to ask him to show some pictures here. I'm going to crawl up there. Let's take a look at some of his examples of other work that he's These done. These are some of the some of examples. Uh, I just want to show you. These are some of examples of other works that our our stone master craftsman here has done. Here's one picture. You see with the waterfalls, and he likes to integrate natural plants as planters in with his landscape. You can see the waterfall here. Let's see, where's the one with the, oh, there you go. Here's some right here. You can see the stonework. And these are real stones, correct? All yes. real stones, all real stonework. Now this, this one right here in particular, this one that I wanted to show you, you see the color, the light uh, or the tan, uh, the tan type of color of stonework, if you can see it with the amount of light that we have here. This is what we're going for, for the waterfall over here. Okay, well it looks like they were successful getting the hole in the side for the vacuum adapter. Now you're probably wondering, why do we have the ladder back out here again? Well, let's talk a little about the ladder and uh, something that we talked about earlier in an earlier episode that had to do with grounding strategy. Now in the Philippines, a lot of places don't do grounding. Uh, it's becoming more and more prevalent uh, with some contractors who are up with technology, but some of the older ones, uh, they still avoid doing any type of grounding, whether there's grounding for inside your house for your receptacles, uh, also with pools. So what we did is we talked early on with our contractor here and we requested uh, standard standard grounding. Uh, so what we're going to do and the reason that the, the ladder is out today from our storage place down inside the basement is we're going to do grounding. We're going to do copper, copper wire. Uh, we're looking for number eight 
uh, AW, AWG solid copper wire and we're going to run it to a ground rod that will be over by by the life support system everything that's made out of metal will have grounding and we have two ladders so both of the ladders will be grounded uh, so if you're probably wondering and i was wondering too how they're going to do the grounding uh, originally these things right here are set up these are mounts that go inside they're embedded inside the concrete they have anchor points on here that will anchor your ladder so it will slide right inside here and you have this adjusting if you adjusting bolt so if you ever wanted to take it out you can loosen these up and you can remove your ladder uh, normally it wouldn't be done underneath the water where these are at. Normally this would be for some place like over there on the other side because it goes to a sidewalk and the bolt is exposed. Uh, it presents a little bit of a challenge when you have it here. You can do it, uh, but it's a little bit of a challenge uh, because if you bring it out, you need some way to disconnect your copper wire from your ladder. So what we're going to do here, and it was recommended by one of you, one of the subscribers, is why not put it in permanently? Why don't, why don't you have it installed permanently, your ladders, instead of making it a removable? Well, this one, we're going to do it like that. We're going to continue using the the anchors inside here because the anchors are meant to embed inside the concrete as well as this is an area right here so that if when you're pulling on the, the ladder itself it doesn't pose a chance of breaking or cracking your mosaic or whatever tile that you use or the concrete around it so it's it's a security feature that you need so we're going to keep this but what we're going to do in the base down here they're going to drill a hole put a mounting uh, bolt inside here and run our copper wire and our copper wire is going to be embedded inside the concrete and follow all of our rest of our electrical that we have here and go over to our ground rod again which is going to be by the life support system by the waterfall uh, we will also do the same over there but that one that ladder will be able to take in and out because it's above ground we're not worried about burying that uh, that ground cable on that one particular one over there so we can remove that if we want to remove that ladder for some reason uh, we'll also be grounding the 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 rebar or the biga they call it over here uh, at one point because basically most of your rebar they touch it they're all connected to much most everything inside your swimming pool and we will also inside the the life support or the waterfall housing there will be a pump inside there and we'll use the chassis and we'll bolt that down also to the ground rod so we'll have all of our chances of any type of electrical seepage under any water riding on the sidewalk or on the side of the coping anything like that that will be grounded and will be safer for our swimming pool so the big change i wanted to say was this is going to be permanent now we, we're going to embed it into the concrete and this will be a fixed position this ladder that goes right here also today there was extra emphasis done on the waterproofing of the interface between the wall and the floor your your chances your highest chances of any type of cracks or seepage will always be at an interface between planes whether it be a vertical or a horizontal plane or inside a corner uh, so that's what they spent a lot of time on today as you can see all around the pool doing waterproofing for that area so something to keep in mind I, well, I, I turned my head for a second these guys are too fast for me and they're already doing something that's really exciting <laughs> and i wanted to see all the exciting stuff go on here so let's go over here and take a look and see what exciting thing that they're doing Well, those guys are still at it, but we're running out of light. And when we don't have light, you can't see my face. Again, maybe that's not a bad thing sometimes. Uh, so anyway, we're gonna close from here. A lot of stuff done today. Uh, new territory, new territory meaning tile. I did not expect us to go into the tile laying territory today. Uh, you got to see a few things that you didn't get to see in some of the other uh, other episodes and i believe one of them was the tile selection oh and we had the rock guy come by today the guy that's going to be doing the natural i mean real boulders real rocks uh i'm not sure how they're going to get them in here 
I think they're pretty heavy. Uh, but that's their job. So we'll wait and see when that happens. I'm not sure how many days it's going to be before that happens, but it's probably going to be pretty soon because we're running out of days. We're coming close to our completion point. Uh, I'm going to say maybe about two more weeks and we will be 100% done. Well, let's go ahead and close. And uh, tomorrow is another day, day 34 on the construction schedule. So anyway, until tomorrow, day 34. If you enjoyed today's video, please give me a thumbs up. Please share, and if you have not subscribed, just click on that little My PI Dream Heart in the bottom right hand side of your screen. You'll be subscribed and notified the next time I upload a new video. So until such time from right here in the Philippines, you have a wonderful and blessed day. today's episode and you would like to see more just like these just click on one of the helpful links over to your right and you might be able to pick up on some good information on DIY projects how to or if you are interested in moving to the Philippines and building you'll find answers there as well